We've always exported some oil since they legalized it a couple of years ago, but it's actually amazing how much oil we are actually selling outside of America now. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, we're getting back there to that importing, but we're also producing more oil, but we're still not where we need to be. Our rig count in the United States is, is, is still not where we need to be. We're up 50% from last year, but that doesn't mean that we're out of the out of the woods. I mean, we're we still need to continue our 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 drilling in the United States. Our governments are need to get behind us more and talk about content. If you need content, there is a lot of content for for drilling for oil and gas in the United States. There's a lot of content with federal governments. You know, that need our our support. We need our state governments to continue on. I mean, there's just so much information right now that 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 is not out there yeah. that's that's proactive, if you will, right, about, you know, trying to produce oil and gas and trying to get back. And two, you know, I mean, even though we are drilling for oil and gas now, we've got to keep up with the inventory. You know, we've got to drill like 2,000 wells a year in the Permian Basin to keep at our production because once, once the drilling stops or if it levels off, we need to continue drilling because wells do decrease in production. I don't think people understand. You know, even though we're back to drilling and we look like we're there, I mean, demand could just kill us right now. If our demand goes up a lot, well, there's a, we there's don't a have lot, the oil yeah. necessary. There's a, there's a lot of content to your point, Jay, and I don't want to get into the politics of it because it's too doggone early for that. But you know, obviously, a lot of people say, oh, all the leases, and why aren't they drilling? And they make it sound so easy. And with all due respect to anybody, it's it's not that easy. And I hope to come out, by the way, to West Texas in late September, maybe even early October, and tell more of this story that just because you've got a lease doesn't mean you've got a permit. And even if you got a permit, doesn't mean you have people. And if you got people, doesn't mean you have frac sand or water or a way to get the oil out, does it? There are a ton of hurdles that still exist. Still is. Yeah, exactly, Brian. And when you talk about the type of money that's needed, you know, hundreds of millions, billions of dollars that is needed to drill for oil and gas. You need the people, you know, and I've always said there's four reasons why we're not producing. I mean, it's number one, federal governments, you know, that, that are keeping us from drilling. There's state governments that keep us from getting permits. I mean, we, we, we're getting permits in Wyoming, trying to. It's harder in Wyoming and Colorado compared to Texas Oklahoma and Kansas. I got a permit in Texas not long ago. It takes me about a week. In Wyoming, it takes two, three months. But also the public companies. There's still a lot of people on public companies that are on the boards and they're saying, we don't want you to drill for oil and gas. We want you to give those profits back to us. We're not putting that. I mean, there was like record profits last, last quarter, 31 billion by the top three. And all of a sudden, are they back to drilling? No. And that's what normally happens. In a, in a situation like this, when you have, you know, companies making so much money in the oil and gas business, they put that money back to work in the, it, to drilling, and then, and then all of a sudden your supply comes back. That's what normally happens in a cycle. This is an anomaly where we're not seeing that. We're seeing quite opposite, you know, where companies are putting money back in, into buying more stock. They're doing uh, shares to yeah. dividends to investors instead of doing what they normally do, which is, you know, drill for oil and gas. You know, so the, the capital well, is a couple not years ago, a couple years ago, the industry was effectively being, yeah, a couple years ago, the industry is effectively being told to wind down. It's over, and now people are wondering why they're not producing more oil. I, I, you know, it's, it doesn't seem that hard to figure it out. A lot of people leaving the industry because they're feeling, well, if my, if my industry is dead and being told to go away, I better find a new job in, in something else. That's maybe a longer-term issue. In the short term, Jay, what do you see happening with oil prices? I, I see it going back to $100, $100 a barrel, $120 a barrel. I mean, we're not seeing the, the supply that we need that will meet the demand when our demand starts going up. We've had a couple of you know inflationary periods. We've had some China COVID issues. Those kind of issues bring our demand down. When it brings demand down and we have an oversupply, obviously the prices are coming down. But as you see this morning, prices are coming back. I, I see, you know, by the end of the year, we can see $120, $125. I mean, it's just, we, we, we're not doing the things necessary in a market like this to keep the price down.
We need support from the governments. We need we need more capital. You know, a lot of a lot of institutions are not bringing the capital back like they were before. You know, so we need that money. We need support. We need all the things necessary so we could continue drilling for oil in the United States because it does take supply. And like I mentioned, I mean, we're an anomaly. Yeah. Normally in a cycle, you see this and where people start drilling for oil and oversupply the demand and prices will come down. But you're not seeing it this time, Brian. So we're, we're in for some higher oil prices, yeah. which will affect everything because gasoline obviously does affect, you know, everything from people going out to restaurants to everything that's transported uh, by cars and trucks, you know, prices are going to be higher.